Anyhow, let's move along now and uh, welcome in one of my favorite men. Wow, look at that. Look at this studios man. The master himself, Henzo Gracie. Can he hear me? Is he no-selling me? I don't know what's going on over there. Rocking the hipster glasses. Roots of Fight shirt. Oh, there he is. Henzo, how are you? Handsome devil. Huh? Yes. <laughs> what are you what are you reading over there? I was checking an old book that I that I that I read in Portuguese a while back. The Age of Uncertainty by Galbraith. Beautiful, unbelievable book. Wow. Look and at I I was just thinking that I never read in English, but I'm I'm gonna go this week to grab it <laughs> so I can read it in the original version. Have you read all those books behind you? Yes. Wow. Yes, all of them. Un which is your favorite? Yeah. Uh, I love this Galbraith one. I have. Uh, there's a man. It's difficult to to say a favorite, but Guns Germs is still is unbelievable. Okay. I love I love the Greek history. You know, like everything. I read about politics in Brazil. You know, and I have I have not only what is behind me, but I have a whole closet full of books. Who introduced? If I grab any more. My father. Your father. My father always always read a lot, yeah. Wow. I, I had no idea you were this philosophical, this this learned. Ah, uh, can you believe? Uh, you, you, not only a thug, but a thinker too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, always a pleasure to talk to you and see you. Thank you for coming on. A lot I want to talk to you about. First things first, I mean, we were just talking to Mark Ratner about this, New York passing the bill to legalize MMA. You are one of the most famous, uh, you know, uh, mixed martial artists in the state of New York. You have your, your, your gym there. You have been there for years and years and years. Now that the sport is legalized or about, you know, it's a formality, the governor has to sign. But what does this do for your business? It's, uh, my business is already very profitable and very, yeah, and very nice. It's like if it gets better, you'll be unbelievable. You know, you can, <laughs> there's always room to improve. Definitely, I would love if it gets better. If it, if we're able to get more by having fights next to my academy because I'm a block away from Metro Square Garden, for sure I will get a lot of new students. So I can't wait for that to happen. But uh, I don't I don't look as only a way for me to benefit from. I see as the martial art community to benefit from. We're gonna have a whole new industry, a whole new field to be able to to profit and to and to grow the name of martial arts, you know, and I, I believe New York is the, the windows of the world. Anything that, that shines here will shine everywhere in the globe. So I can't wait to see a, a beautiful UFC event at uh, Metro Square Garden. Uh, was it ever awkward for you that you can have this business, you can have people train there, you can have some of the best fighters in the world at your gym, and yet it was technically illegal? I already have them there. What you, are you talking about? Yes, but it was, <laughs> it was illegal. Isn't that weird? Wasn't that a strange thing to wrap your head around? Definitely, definitely. It's a... I, I, I really, I'm, I'm really surprised it took that long. Mm. You know, I'm really surprised it took that long. But I'm glad finally they, the politicians, after even saying no, having no, even though some of them have no common sense at all when they were <laughs> on the floor, trying to to advocate against. But it's beautiful to see that now we are we are uh, MMA is part of New York. It's amazing. In 2016, people still think this way about about our sport. But I guess that will always be the case. Um, by the way. Your old friend. My dear friend. Yes. My dear friend. A few decades ago, yeah. Elvis Presley could not be filmed by the waist down. That's true. You know, you can't expect to break ground from, from one day to the other. It's, you know. It's a very good point. It's not, it's not about them accepting us. It's about them swallowing us. Now we are here. Deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, your old friend, George St. Pierre, I believe is in New York right now. Have you seen him? Oh yes, yes. What's going yes. on there? Give, give you. If one man can give us the scoop, you can give us the scoop. What's going on? Is he coming back? He's coming back for sure. I, that, that boy, the best thing he does in life is fighting. You know, it's wow. uh, look for how long he's been a champion. He overcomes so many obstacles, so many things that people don't know. George used to come from Canada, leaving four four thirty in the morning, come to New York by bus, train the whole day, and leave at night. Wow. You know? Wow. So it's uh, like this two, sometimes three times a week. Wow. So like a champion is not uh, just born. He's forging to it. And George has all the, all, the, all the tools to become a champion again. And for sure, he's looking for, he's now 100% healthy. Like I saw him, he's in unbelievable shape. And for sure, he'll be announcing soon to, wow. to be back in the game. This is very exciting. What do you think? What do you think is his uh, return fight? Who will he fight? 
whoever is the champion, I think he, okay. he deserves and he earns throughout his life work a, a straight shot to the champion. So whoever the champion is on their weight division, for sure, you are just coming after him. And you have no concerns because of the time off that he might be a little rusty or, you know, he's older. You have no concerns about that? No. How old is he now? Oh, I think he's in his, his mid-30s. Um, I will check it up as yeah, we are. Yeah, this is the thing. In my head, it's like my kids. They're going to be kids forever. So I saw George when he was 16. 34. <laughs> you know, 17. 34. 34. 34 is after they create Viagra. <laughs> a man of seven years old is just a kid. <laughs> Boy, what are you talking about a 34-year-old? He's on his prime. <laughs> that is true. That is a good point. Um, you've been yeah. in the news as well. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on my Twitter last week, and... Uh, all of a sudden, everyone's writing to me, Henzo Gracie is on Monday Night Raw talking about Shane McMahon before his match at WrestleMania against The Undertaker. And I've been following him on Twitter. He's with Crew Phil Nurse. He's with you. How long have you been training with Shane McMahon, Shane O'Mac? Uh, to be honest, today, his secretary called me because I'm going to go meet him later today. Okay. And she goes, should I reach you on this number? So she gave me a 732-890-0163. I go, please tell Shane to not to give this number to nobody. <laughs> because this number was my first number when I came to the United States. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, yes. So I, I don't have that number for the past 12 years or 10 years. So Shane has been training with us for a long time, you know? Wow. that's you know, a, I had so no like, idea. Yeah, like I'm, yeah, and in reality, Shane trains Jiu-Jitsu for a long time. He was every day at the academy at 6 o'clock in the morning. And the partner that I had trained with him was Hollis because it's his size, you know? Yeah. 6'4", 250, so he could put up with Shane. If I had trained with him every day the way that he was training, I probably have no joints today. <laughs> so you know? when he walked... And, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was just curious. When he walks in okay. for the first and he's time... he's in great shape now. Like, it's, it looks like it. From the videos, from everything I've seen. Do you, do you, did you know who he was? Like, when he walked in, did you know that he was the son of this guy, Vince McMahon, all that? I knew. I knew more or less. I knew more or less. Right after the first week he began, then I learned it, you know. But you have to understand, I'm extremely smart for a lot of things and extremely dumb for others. <laughs> You know, it's like, uh, to me, anybody that walk in academy is extremely important. Every student I have is a Shane McMahon for me, you know. And uh, and I think for that reason, they they always give me back, you mm. know. They, they see this and they, and in reality, I, I not even, I knew he was having a match back. He was coming back and he was kind enough to go, Hans, I want to promote your school. I love your school so much. And this place received me like I was part of the family and I felt I was home here. And I want to give back to jiu-jitsu. I say jiu-jitsu is a great sport. I love to train jiu-jitsu. So can I do the promotion here at your academy? I say, Shane, this is your house. It was always your house. You wow. know, if a white belt asked me to do this, I allowed him. Imagine you, you know. So I'm very happy and I'm very glad to be next to him at that moment. Of course, we know that uh, pro wrestling is scripted and we see some clips. But is he actually training for this like one, you know, like a George training for a fight or a Chris Wyman? Like, is he coming to the gym all the time and, and doing everything like a fighter training for an MMA fight? Yeah, man, he's in the best shape of his life. I've never huh. seen nobody on that shape. He dropped probably like 25, 30 pounds. Wow. He's cut. He's moving like a, like a, he's a heavyweight moving like a lightweight. You know, uh, I don't know if you notice, but we, we're getting cut on and off a little bit. Have you noticed that? For me, it's all good. Over here, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's fair. I think you, you got to stop buying your equipment at Chinatown, man. You got to <laughs> stop with that. <laughs> you, you've been perfect. But, you've been perfect for me. <laughs> Thank you. It's great. But the, the, the reality is, man, those guys are top athletes. You know, look at Brock Lesnar. Mm. What an amazing athlete, a real wrestler. Look how good he did at the UFC. You know, so it would be great to see more of them uh, interacting and fighting in different events and trying new grounds. You know, and I love WWE. Nobody brought more attention to fighting than they did. Mm. You know, they really did an unbelievable work, job. You see people fall in love with you. A lot of the fans that we have today came from them. You know, and they do an unbelievable, an unbelievable work. I, I had a chance to see their work in Japan. It's mm. beautiful. I've seen the crowded arena, the TV shows they have there, all over Asia. So it's, you know, it's like anything that brings fighting 
to to a pedestal I, I worship and I love it, you know. And I, I admire those guys as an athlete. I, and believe it, my friend, I fought laymen who were very good athletes. They made me sweat, you know. <laughs> so especially those guys who have knowledge and they, they spend their life dedicated to... What people don't realize, these guys are on the road mm. 300, sometimes 360 days a year. Mm. They have a chance to go home for a week. Yeah. You know, they work hard they comp- and they do shows three or four times you know, and, and it, it's unbelievable. I really admire their, 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 their work ethic, the way that they do it, and everything that they do it. So, will you be going you to know? Dallas? I don't. I won't be able to. Oh. I have. Uh, I have to travel soon. I'm setting up some business on the side here oh. to make sure that I that I don't depend of my of my daughter changing my diapers when I grow old. <laughs> <laughs> what are you working on? But. <laughs> I'm working in some construction, in Ooh. some uh, healthcare company. Uh, wow, look I've at you! I've been working a lot with a healthcare company, so it's 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 really taking shape. And I do hope that one day I can help uh, America to be healthier and better in terms of healthcare. You're like a more likable Donald Trump. Much better. Yeah, yeah. he's a buffoon. <laughs> we gotta build a wall in front of him. He wants to build a wall. The only place I think he should have built a wall is, a, is across from his mouth. You know, like a, to close his mouth. But the reality, this is the beauty of America. Even he could be president, he still wouldn't be able to do this nonsense that he claimed he would. Mm-hmm. Do. You know, in reality, this great country has great people behind the administration, and they will put him in his place and and show him the right direction to go. Um. I was talking to crew Phil Nurse about about Shane, and he said he has no doubt about the fact that if 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 Shane was you know in his prime twenty years ago when this sport was coming up, that he would be an MMA fighter. That's what he loves doing. He loves MMA, and he has the talent and athleticism to be a fighter. Do you agree with him? This, yeah, it's like a hundred percent. Like I remember when he began training jiu jitsu, he fell in love. He loved, and every time he trains, he gives everything he has. You know, and his ability, his athleticism, look what he does on the pro wrestling. You know, how easy, like, I don't know if you know, but when when they pick athletes to play American football, they pick them, they have a criteria only for their athleticism. Hmm. Because to play the ball will be easy, you know, if you are a gifted athlete. Yeah. And the same thing will be for fighting. You got a guy like this who's naturally an extremely good athlete, Always in shape, has the driven force to fight, to put everything he got on every training session he does. He'll be an unbelievable fighter. And I don't know why Crew Few Nurse said 20 years ago. It's like if if we push the right buttons, we get his, this guy to jump in a cage for sure. It's amazing. You know, he's a he's a daredevil. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about just a couple more things before I let you go. And again, it's great to uh, to have you on. And congratulations, by the way, on the roots of fight, Hensel Gracie uh, gear. They actually hooked me up with Did one. You like it? Beautiful. Uh, th- those guys, yeah, those guys are amazing. Uh, Jess is the best. You know, yeah. I love, I love everything they do. I have a Tyson one here yeah. now from them. Look, you know, and I have a BJ one here. I have, I have the whole collection here in my closet. And you know, the beauty, what, I, what I like them even more, it's because they don't pick any model that is better looking than me. You know, <laughs> maybe, maybe the Rock. I give up because the Rock looks a little bit yeah. like me. In a bigger size, you know. <laughs> Just hearing you say the name BJ gets me excited because I think back to my favorite line in MMA history about him being uh, in his father's yeah. nutsack when you were still fighting. The, the greatest line ever. There yes. will never be a better one than that. Um, by the way, what's your take on this debate? People were criticizing Conor McGregor for tapping and saying that Holly Holm, she's tougher because supposedly she didn't tap. Is there, and, and you would know about this because you were in that position with Sakuraba, is there, is there honor in not tapping in your opinion? Definitely. It's a compliment to your opponent if you don't tap. Ah. So this shows that he fought a much greater fighter, you know? So, like, we always saw it that way, uh, you know? And I, I always, one thing that I was wondering, I say, because I was technical enough to spend my whole amateur career, my whole life in a competition without being caught on nothing. Wow. You know, the first time I was actually caught was by Sakuraba on the arm lock. And I was extremely glad when I left because uh, I didn't, I, I made sure that my mind was stronger than my than my, my ligaments and my body, you know, and that was a victory of my mind over my body. And wow. for sure was, I, I, I was sure that I was a samurai that day, you know, like, uh, and my whole life I was wondering if I would or would not. So that gift that Sakuraba gave me was a, was something that I would cherish for the rest of my life. Wow. So you would advise to a young 
fighter, up and coming fighter, not to tap ever? I cannot. How can I advise that? Nobody ever told me that. Mm. There was an unwritten rule that I abide for it. You know, it's like each person chooses how they want to live their life. It's like Muhammad Ali said, like uh, greatness is not a, it's, it's, it's not on the ring. It's on the gym. It's on the hard work that you put it on and on the beliefs that you have, you know. And, and this is the biggest truth. It's you choose your path. You choose how you want people to remember you. It's been over 15 years. I don't know. I don't even know when that was. Yeah. And you ask me about that moment again. Yeah. That's how important it was, you know. Yeah. Which is exactly like when I beat Pat Miletic and Every support that I had in the arena jumped in the ring and they lift me up. And I remember the security trying to kick them out. And as they lifted me up, I was telling the security, leave them, let them be. After that, you know how many times the, 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 the owners of IFL asked me to try to reproduce that moment? I told them it's impossible. We, don't, we cannot reproduce that. That just happens. You know, and I was glad you guys let it happen. Mm. You know, let everyone that, that I knew and that was supporting me on that arena jump in the ring and lift me up. So it's, it's those are rare moments that, you know, people are going to be talking about for the rest of your yes. life. All you have to see is a picture and the moment coming to your life. Like you're going to go through generations. So McGregor could have not that, definitely. Mm. But it's up to him. It's, you know, like he's definitely a great fighter. I love the way that he fights. I actually watched the fight again last night before oh. I went to bed. Wow. You know, and I, yeah, and I was able to see it in an even different way. It's, he fought very well. Nate just is a bigger frame and was able to put up with the punishment. And when he had a chance to finish the fight, he did it extremely well. Like even when he took, when he took McGregor's back and, and he was sinking in the choke. You see McGregor defending. He did a perfect punch on the side of the head to lift his jaw. The hand was right in and the choke was on. You know, so it was a brilliant fight from Nate, you know. And, and I'm, I'm glad that it happened. Uh, that victory happened to Nate because it couldn't happen to better guys, you know. Him and his brother are unbelievable yep. human beings. Gosh, I can listen to you speak all day. It's just there's something about the way you speak. It is so damn captivating. Um, but we have run out of time. Thank Let me you. just ask you about this. What about you? Are you competing? Are, are we done? You Sometimes you give us hints here and there. You tease us. I'm never done. Okay. I'm never done. I had the opportunity to go watch uh, Bellator. Yeah. And uh, Richard Chow and, ah. and his boss grabbed me on the backstage. They go, what about you? You, you want to come back? You know, maybe at, until the end of the year, we get you here. I look at them and say, what are you guys doing? Try to set up a geriatric <laughs> clinic here. <laughs> I cannot fight old people. Like old like me. I got to right. fight. Right. If I fight, I'll jump in with the young boys. You know, <laughs> I want to feel the pressure. And if I had my ass kicked, may that be epic, you know, by a good guy. That's what I value. So you're considering it? <laughs> but for sure, for sure. My knee is better now. I, had a, I actually had a torn ACL before my last grappling match with Sakuraba a day before. Wow. And I was, I was lucky enough that didn't, didn't uh, swallow like the, the first time that happened fighting Carlos Newton. And I could fight the next day. I was able to fight. And then after that, I couldn't move. My knee would, wouldn't move anymore. But I was lucky to be able to, to have that grappling match with him. And I, 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 I redid the ACL. I put a cadaver one, and I'm back 100%. I just begun training again. And by the end of by, by, by this year, I want to have some fun again with the Oh, my one. gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, uh, okay. Definitely. Well, stay tuned for that. Uh, again, Henzo, thank you so much. A pleasure, as always. Like I said, I could talk to you for hours. Um, but I appreciate thank your you, time uh, here. Uh, oh, always that a pleasure, my, my pleasure, friend. Man. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Henzo. Guys. Thank Obrigado. You. Obrigado to the master, yeah. Henzo Gracie himself. Uh, wow, there, there is, uh, there's nothing like listening to that man speak. Un he's just so damn captivating. And, and now he says, and, 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 and do you hear what he said? Yeah, he'll fight, but he doesn't want to fight the old guys. He doesn't want to fight the old guys. Unbelievable. He wants to fight the young guys. There's only one Henzo Gracie. Amazing stuff.